everyone. I just want to show you what we're using in case you'd like to follow along. This is a 9x12 double sided lap board and you can use craft plastic. Any kind of shiny surface will work for this particular project. I also have my trusty water bottle here. It's not alcohol today, just water in this one. And also my brushes. This is a silicone brush in case I need it. It just has silicone ends, often used for nail art. And also my regular brushes. Not looking too good, but this is my one inch soft bristle brush. And this one is just a filbert brush. Let me make sure I keep this clean so we don't have anything, you know, debris on our surface. Okay. Now, let me show you the colors that I'm going to be using. There are only three, but we're gonna get a lot of color from these three colors. This is Amsterdam Payne's Gray, and this is Master's Touch Ultramarine Blue and Rouge. So just three colors, but you're gonna see we're gonna get a lot more color out of this one, and we're gonna have a very colorful piece. Now this is just a piece of polystyrene ribbing and we are going to be using this to make texture today. I'm always looking for things to make texture and in this case we're going to be using this. And it just came in my boxes uh, that I get my whiteboards in. And uh, that's very convenient because we're going to be using it to make a picture today. Now I'm going to grab my water bottle and I am going to spray my board down with it kind of liberally. This needs to stay wet today. We don't want it to dry out too soon. And uh, you can use pour paint. That's absolutely fine. If you've got pre-made pour paint that has pour medium in it, that can be used for this as well. But today I'm going to be using just paint and water. Now I usually keep a little container over to the side so I can mix my paints with water because I'm just using water for this one and this is Payne's Gray. Now it looks a little blue but that is the nature of Payne's Gray. It is a very blue gray and this one is particularly blue, Amsterdam's versions of it. And I am just going to very quickly coat my board to demonstrate the texture that I'm going to be using and I love finding things that make really cool textures and imprints in this kind of artwork. Of course, the brush itself can be used to make incredible texture for a background of a painting. But in this case, I'm just getting a little bit of a background down to show you how to make a very specific texture. So I'm taking my polystyrene rib here and just patting it. Now you could leave the middle exposed because that's a pretty cool texture there. You could use it to make a box, but in this case, I'm just showing you the texture that you're going to get. Now you've seen the texture with balloons that you can get, the many different textures you can get, and this is just another way to make texture on your paintings. While this is kind of bubbly now, when it dries, it will have a very pebbly-like effect and have a lot of texture and this is the texture we're going to be making right now as we do our project for the day. Okay I've wiped down the whiteboard and we're going to start over and I'm going to be applying my three colors and the first one is going to be rouge. Over on the side I am just loading my paintbrush and I am uh, putting down my rouge and I'm dipping that into water but I think we're going to need a little bit more water and I should have sprayed it first. I don't want it too awfully wet but I do need it wet enough. There's this happy medium that you have between uh, not wet enough and way too wet. So I'm going to be doing color blocks here. So put some blocks of my rouge and then I'm going to come in and I'm going to put some blocks of my Payne's Gray next. It's a very pretty color Payne's Gray by the way. I like to work with this color. And we will get some of that in. And then I will also put some of my ultramarine blue. Just uh, have to grab another brush for this. I'm using separate paint brushes for this because I'm going to need them in a little while. So I actually did add a brush um, that I didn't show you in the very beginning, but it's just another filbert brush, basically exactly the same as the second brush that I showed you. So I am filling in some blue. So while I only have three colors, you're going to see what my texture is going to do to this. Um, I'm just going to be a little sloppy here. It does not have to go all neat at all. Um, you can finger paint it on. So now I'm going to take my little ribbing and I'm going to start doing my texture. And I do not care that all of my colors are going to mix because I want my colors to mix. They're going to make some extra colors. So while I don't have purple actually in my colors, you are going to see purple because red and blue 
make purple, of course, and uh, it's going to add a lot of dimension. So this is how I'm going to be working with multiple colors today. Here we go. Just lots of pat, 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 pat. And this is going to be my background. Now, okay, so I'm taking my polystyrene right now, and we are going to be removing paint. I'm just swiping to the side, to the very edge, and you can see what an organic shape you get. I always like to find cool things that I can remove the paint with to make new shapes. And this one kind of looks like a frond, like a palm frond. And I'm just over to the side, I am wiping off my paint because the paint can start to accumulate. I'm just gonna move on to this next corner and again, I'm just going to swipe outward. And also swipe around. Again, it looks like a palm frond when I'm doing this. It's a very colorful palm frond you can just really see how when you remove the paint how interesting and detailed your uh, images become that you're creating so just keep on now I'm swiping outward and just turning my lazy Susan lazy Susan is such a wonderful tool because it allows you to go all the way around if you've seen me use this in my balloon creations or in any of the other creations that I've made like this, or even when I'm working in my pore painting, then you can see how useful it is. Now I'm gonna make some really broad strokes. And now you can see my background and kind of see what I was going for. Now this one's a lot of fun because it is so happy and full of color. You can use one color if you want. You can use as many colors as you like kind of feeling out what I'm doing and uh, seeing what feels right for this particular piece. While this particular one looks like a plant, you can make feathers this way as well. There we go. Let me just uh, pull that out. I feel like a ribbon. I feel like something moving. I love to add some movement in. Now, let me add just a few more squiggles. This is an abstract piece, so it's whatever I would like to invent. And I'm gonna put some color down. I think we're getting a little washed out toward the right there. So I'm going to add a little bit of ultramarine blue right up the ribbon. Just trace it right up to put some color back in there. And then I'm going to add some of my rouge. And I do not clean the brush, and that adds a lot of shading and shadowing and something very whimsical by not cleaning the brush. And then also my Payne's Gray. I think I'll go back over that one, make that one a little bit darker. And you can see how that adds some shadow in. And let's do one more. Let's not remove the paint, but let's just put the paint straight on the board with this one, just using a very heavy Payne's Gray because uh, the rest look kind of blue, so we want that little bit of turquoise that the Payne's Gray gives. And just put it out there and through the universe. There we go. I love adding movement to a picture, and this really just adds movement. Now I'm going to take my little silicone brush and do some squigglies. And that is, again, completely going to remove the paint from the whiteboard. So it's going to appear white when I do this. Uh, with shadowing, I love that you have that natural shadowing that comes with doing this technique. And I can just slither them any way I want. Maybe they're blowing in the breeze, maybe they're alive. It's just nice abstract fun. You can also use, as I'm using here to show you, is just a cotton swab to remove it. You're going to get a wider kind of ribbon if you use the cotton swab but you can remove the paint that way. The problem is with making these squiggles is if it gets too dry, you can't remove the paint and give that very consistent squiggle. Let me put one over here too with my cotton swab. I think I'm just about done with this. It's just about having fun and creating um, whatever you want to create. One more right here. Yeah, there we go. 
Okay, I think I'm happy with what I have. And uh, making sure it's cleaned up. Yeah, okay. I need to know when to stop. So I think I'm done now with my little squiggles. And here is what I have. And you can really get an up close look at some of the shading and the shadowing that happens with this, which makes this type of artwork so much fun. Since I was having such a good time, I ended up doing three pieces. So here is one done earlier, one, and then two, which is very different actually. And then we have the third one that I just finished and here it is dry. This is number three. So let me know which one you like down in the comments below if you have a favorite of these three different ones. And thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell for more videos. Bye now.